What is good, everybody? We are back. It is your boy Gerard and your girl Gabby, episode 68 of the Kicks and Shit Show. <laughs> Quick one, in, out, you know. Yeah, one take, Gerard. That's all it takes, right? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Of the um, 68 episodes we've done, right? Like, how many actual. Oh, we got to start that over. We have not had a lot of those, all right? This has been a. A smooth transition. I agree. I mean, I just think we should have included that as the first thing. You know, Trod, I don't want to create a false sense of perfection with our <laughs> audience. I'm like, we just get this right every time. Let's keep it a hundred. No, listen, it's we, your boy Gabby and your girl Gerard here. Let's we listen, listen, let's listen. We it. we let's get go. it right ninety eight percent of the time. All Which right, I think it's better than most. You know what I mean? <laughs> better I just, the most. Better the like most. I like to keep it real with our audience. Listen, we, we, we are giving it real with our audience. Um, normally, I start off, Gabby, asking you what's going on in these streets, and uh, we will get that get to that. I do want to start off with just, you know, some sort of poignant and more more serious topics. Um, uh, when this episode is released, when you guys listen to it, it is the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks um, on our nation. Um, I'm sure everyone can remember where they were, what was happening at those times. Um, you know, it's always a good time to just reflect and not only remember what's important in life, but, you know, those that, that, that lost their lives, um, you know, it, it, it was a moment that for sure, um, obviously shaped and changed the way that, you know, we operate as a country in so many different ways. Um, uh, that is the first thing. The other two things, um, the famed actor, Michael Kenneth Williams, he played Omar on the wire. He was Chalky White on board, on boardwalk empire. He was also in Lovecraft Country and The Night Of on HBO. Um, he tragically died of an overdose. And um, Fuquan Johnson comic also uh, died of an overdose. And, you know, this isn't one of those things where it's, hey, you know, let me make this about me or whatever. It's, it's not about that. Um, you know, life is hard. And no matter what we see on the outside... Um, that is shown to us on Instagram or on social medias, other platforms or whatever. You do not know what is going on with people. And it's all the more important to, you know, people say it and it's cliche, but no, actually do it. Check in on your friends, on your people, on your family, you know, people you have those kinds of relationships with that, you know, even acquaintances who you talk to regularly, just see what is going on with people and just ask them, hey, how are you doing? Like, you never know, you know, what that could do for someone. Um, and I'm sure you have thoughts you want to share as well, Gabs. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, this pandemic also has really magnified a lot of these issues and brought them to the forefront. And I think it's important to talk about it, right? Because we all have our struggles. And I think there's nothing wrong with coping in the way that you need to cope. But I agree, there's a real power of connection that, like when I ask someone how they are, I'll follow it up with, okay, how are you really? Because I, I think it's important to have those real conversations because I agree with you. You never know who's going to be impacted by that conversation just to know that they're a thought, that they matter. And I think that's really important. I think accidents happen, but to be able to be connected to people, especially with everything going on, the world's a really tough place right now and more so than ever. And that's okay. It's okay to deal with things and to go through things, but you know, reach out to your loved ones, your friends, your family. Yep. I can't echo what you're saying enough. That is, that is the shared human experience, right? Is that the difficulties and trials and tribulations, right? Yeah. Even, even pandemic aside, like life just in general is hard. Like don't get it twisted. Right. And think that it doesn't look hard for so-and-so on Instagram or so it's like, Okay, but you Instagram are Instagram is not reality. Exactly. That's you it. are you Instagram are getting not reality. You are getting highlights. The best of is what you are getting on Instagram, right? You don't know what is actually going on behind the scenes. Um okay. and so again, to to Gabby's point and what I what I'm saying is make sure you know see what's going on and you you do you do in fact never never know. Um so again, uh rest in peace to those two men um and condolences to their families, of course. Um tragic and condolences of course to to all the families uh, still grieving um, loved ones who who died um, uh, on 9-11. Again, the, the 20th anniversary. It's kind of hard to believe that it's it's been 20 years. Um, switch, switching and transitioning into sort of more things relevant um, in, not relevant in a, in a positive way, but just more around our Ballywick, what we talk about here on this show. Um, 
last week we talked about Donda and, uh, you know, certified lover boy has, has been out now. Uh, <laughs> and that, that, that's the new thing, right? That, that's the, that's the new jam. Uh, and that's, you know, it's been funny because there's been so many memes and just people just taking advantage of, you know, th- this, this sort of time, right? Two releases by two of our more influential artists, major artists. Uh, I just thought it was a, a very funny week on social media <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm here for the internet swirl. I mean, I think like shouts, every brand jumped on the bandwagon for certified lover boy, but let me say like certified lover boy, <laughs> well done KFC, you know, and I think it's funny. I, you know, as I sip here on Labor Day with my giant Aperol spritz. Speaking of Aperol spritz, you, you, you want to uh, share with the, with the, with the class? <laughs> I do. I also have a, you know, I'm not necessarily one of those people, but for those who care, it is officially Labor Day when this episode comes out, you guys. It's, you can officially say it's pumpkin spice on Halloween season oh, without come me getting on. hurt. It's not, but it's I'm not. not one of those people. I'm not a pumpkin spice girl. I think if I had a spice girl name, my name probably would be pumpkin spice. <laughs> but it, you know, so of course, everybody knows, right? Bad. The summer season, unofficially, Memorial Day to Labor Day, right? That's what most people view summer as. And so today, you know, you kind of got that vibe out there. It's a nice day here in, in New York City. People were people were out in the streets. Gabby, we, we were, were out in the streets. I was say, we, we were out in the streets. Um, which is why I want to talk about this this, this Aperol spritz. So we were spritzing in the streets. Well, I was. Spritzing. I was gonna say, yeah, I was not spritzing, but you ordered an Aperol spritz, and you had an interesting addition to your Aperol spritz that you were. You were what a beautiful drink, by the way. Can we talk about that? <laughs> this episode is not sponsored by Aperol, everyone. But, but if Aperol wants to sponsor us, please, by all means. <laughs> I mean, I, I basically have enough in my apartment to seem like I'm a sponsored participant. I Do you remember a couple of years ago, by the way, when the, I think it was the New York Times or the Post that came out with an article being like, Aperol Spritz. Not that great. And the people of New York, like, revolted. <laughs> they had to, like, publish a follow-up article. Being like, all right, maybe it is pretty good. We, we hear you. I guess you guys do like this drink. It's funny. Uh, April, yeah, April Spritz is, uh, I mean, I, I like it when I, uh, it's it's one of those things I think the mood for, though. It's not something I order all the time. It's, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a very, it's a, in the mood specific. But, Gabby, your April Spritz came with an addition, an interesting addition. So I, I do want to set the stage, right? The place that we were at <laughs> in the Upper West Side, <laughs> Gossip Girls. <laughs> well, Gossip Girls in the Upper East Side. So I know. Yeah. Well, we're going Upper West Siders. This all is right, the motherfucking right. remix episode, Gerard, okay? It's your boy Gabby and your girl Gerard. All right. Okay? All right. <laughs> chill. Chill. <laughs> Here in these streets. But, you know, a Bloody Mary, fine. Put something savory in there, right? Like a little mm-hmm. snack, a little olive. You know, mm-hmm. I, I prefer a little bacon in mine because I'm a... <laughs> Muscular lady, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I've never seen an olive in a spritz. No. The weirdest part about it is, you know, and, and this was a, a fun restaurant, like great outdoor seating. Everything mm-hmm. was like large and mm-hmm. in charge. Large and in charge. Of the, you know, yes, like correct. you order a bread and it comes like in like a 10 pound <laughs> thing of bread, you know. <laughs> I ordered a side of pickles and I think I had like six pickles sliced up. I don't know why they segregated the two types of pickles. Like, why can't we all just get along? But, like, I think the fact that they put one sole olive <laughs> in this spritz, I was both intrigued and offended at the same time. I want to know <laughs> why. I want to know how. I want to know, was this on purpose? Was this by mistake? So, in, 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 the, in the interim from uh, us going, I, I did do a little bit of Google searching, and there are some people who that's what they do. They, it, is, it is heavy. You know, they, they, they do put uh, olives in the Aperol Spritz. It's not, a, not as uncommon as you think. I would love to know more about these people. How do they live their lives? <laughs> like, do they clean their sneakers? I don't think they do. How do they clean their sneakers? Because if you put, nope. an, when you put an olive in an Aperol Spritz, that's it. You're out. I mean, that to me is like, you might be a serial killer. Like, I don't know what you're going to do next. If you're like, an olive in a spritz is a good decision. Olive on a martini, fine. Bloody Mary, Correct. great. Right. Spritz? Spritz? You're, you're a little, you're a little pass, dubious. A little dubious. All right. Fair Are enough. you going to stab me? I don't know. Are you going to hug me? Maybe. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. Oh, my God. And on that note, friends, <laughs> stay tuned. we got a special guest coming up next. Don't go away. What's good, everybody? We are back. Gabby, we're not alone. We are joined by former professional basketball player turned entrepreneur, Haran Hargrave, a.k.a. H2O. What's up, my man? 
What's going on, man? That's a great introduction. I like that. <laughs> getting off to a great start. Listen, listen. I, I I try to make sure people get hyped about our guests and they're feeling it. So, you know, Haran, thank you for joining us, of course. And I see, of course, you and Gabby got to go with your Knicks. Uh, My Knicks, your, your Knicks colors. Listen, <laughs> I, 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 you know, y'all brought it up because you had to bring your cups out. So I'm going to go there. Um, look, here we go. Let's go, Drive. It's a holiday. Uh, all, all I'm saying is be happy with where you're at. Progress is not linear. Okay. Sometimes it's ups and downs, peaks and valleys. I know y'all been in a valley for a long time. Hopefully, this is your way up out of the valley now, heading towards a peak. But you don't go from the valley to the top of Everest in one season. Okay. That ain't how this game is played. <laughs> That's not what that's not what your man's LeBron says, but okay. <laughs> well, wait. First of all, why LeBron's gonna, LeBron's gonna be my man? You know, I always gotta be on LeBron. I don't know. He's not my man. Oh well, we we know that. We know that. Not mine either. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is this is the anti-LeBron James podcast, apparently. Okay. Anti. It's like the neutral. <laughs> no, I'm neutral on LeBron James. You are a hater, and I don't know enough about Haran yet to find out if he's a hater or not. We're gonna find out. Oh, he's like, yeah, he's a hater. All right, so. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, Harad. So we're we're gonna start at the beginning where we start with so many of our of our guests. When did you first fall in love with sneakers? Oh, I mean, that's been a part of my my whole life. I would say, like my whole since I was a child. Like, like I've always loved sneakers. Um, I've always loved to match. Like, just like from even like I wear like. My staple is like wearing headbands and stuff like that, like when I'm playing on the court and stuff. So and I love to match my uniforms. I would literally go and you know, see what what color I asked, what color we just so I have my headband, match my sneakers. And, you know, you know, they say 80 uh, percent of feeling good is looking good. You know what I mean? So I always like to look the part look nice and match on that court and then you always stand you stand out, you know, when you match your sneakers with the uniform and everything it's uh. So since I was a, a kid, I've always loved sneakers. I would say since I was about, you know, seven, eight years old. Okay. And, and what was that first pair when you were younger that you remember that like, yo, I love these? <sighs> mm. I, I would say there was a the pair that I, it was, uh, it was some Nike, it was a uh, Nike, like Air Max. I couldn't remember, like Air Max that I had. I wore them so much. They were like my favorite pair of sneakers to the point where I had holes in them. <laughs> like, seriously. Um, it was, uh, you know, that was one of my favorite sneakers because they were like durable. And my mother would be like, why do you keep wearing these same sneakers? You have all of these sneakers. And I'm like, but I love them. Like, you know what I mean? And that was, those were my kicks. So Air Max, yeah. I like that. And so <laughs> we, we mentioned that you uh former professional basketball player. So mm -hmm. let's talk about your basketball journey. Um, yeah. where did it begin and, and what, who were some, some players as you were growing, you model or tried to model your game after? Okay. So, um, I've been playing ball since it was, you know, since I was three years old, I would say, you know, my mother, uh, put the ball in my hands. She used to run basketball tournaments. Okay. My mother used to run, run tournaments and Mark Jackson, Anthony Mason, they all like played in my mom's tournament. Um, you know, so it was, uh, it was then that I really fell in love with the game since a little child. And, um, and that literally kept me on a straight and narrow to, uh, to, to do what I had to do. You know what I mean? And that's why I feel like it opened so many doors for me and my life and, and my journey. And it like, it kept me out, out of the streets. It kept me away from, you know, all the, the, the violence that could have occurred when I was in New York, you know, living in New York. And, um, it was just a blessing to, um, you know, have, uh, have something like that as an outlet. So I've been playing since a child and my favorite player um, was Scottie Pippen. Mm. You know, people would think it was Michael Jordan, but it was uh, actually Scottie Pippen. Um, I used to just love his all around game. He would guard the, uh, he would guard the the best defenders. He would, you know, play and I really play so hard. And I, I really feel like the Bulls would not have won um, those championships like that if he wasn't, uh around if he wasn't on the team i i don't think jordan won six rings you know what i mean but um and then after that it was Allen iverson so that was a player that i kind of like mimicked my game after i wore number three because of Allen iverson as well um and uh i just i got tattoos when i was young because of Allen <laughs> iverson you know 
Uh, and he just was, you know, he was flashy on the court and he played like he was a smaller guy like myself. And he uh, had that never give up attitude. And um, I love that about him. I, you know, it was, it's a lot of things that I kind of mimic, you know, I was super quick the crossover, but I, I, I think I'm a better shooter than Allen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Look at that. Hey, listen, you gotta, I you feel. have to hype like yourself it. or cause ain't nobody else going to hype you. So you gotta, you gotta let people know. Yeah. I like that. So you, you're on the AAU circuit, I assume, right? Playing ball, doing all that? I actually, um, I really wasn't on the AAU circuit. Okay. My story is insane, man. I only played one year of high school basketball and made it to Division One ball. Wow. Um, I only played my senior year at uh, Campus Magnet High School. Quick story um, that can be very long. I, I went to junior high school that uh, had the ninth grade in it. Lloyd Banks, uh, the the artist, the yeah, rapper, yeah. he went to my junior high okay. school. Christopher oh, Lloyd, uh, okay. he's a little older than me and stuff, but um, he went there as well. So uh, I stayed for my ninth grade year. So when I came into high school, people thought I was a freshman. I was actually a sophomore. I broke my left wrist my sophomore year in high school, wiped out a whole season. Came back, worked out really hard. Came back ready for my junior year. Broke my left uh left arm wow my junior year so wipe that whole people don't notice about me. a lot of people don't notice so i literally only had my senior year to play and go hard and like you know and i did it and i i, I went real hard i made all uh queen's first team i made honorable mention all city um but i also i didn't have the grace so i had to go to junior college and stuff i had to go that route i went to a Division three junior college my mm. freshman year. And um, that's like impossible to become a Division one player after going Division mm-hmm. three mm-hmm. junior college and stuff. So um, I, I worked really hard. I, you know, I went from not even supposed to be in on that team because I was trying to go to prep school because I only played one year high school basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I need to play another year. But that didn't work out. So um, my, my people and stuff was like, you got to go somewhere. Thank you, folks. A little bit of technical difficulties. You know how that goes. But, Haran, you were in the middle of your story. So, you broke your your wrist, your arm. You only played one year high school ball. Went to JUCO. And you got picked up by San Diego State? No. Sacramento State. Sacra- Sacramento State. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. the Big Scott Conference, I uh, wind up leading them and scoring my senior year. Broke the three-point record. Hit nine threes in one game against, uh, uh, sorry, University of Denver. Uh, also st- hold the single game steals record with nine steals against Illinois State. Um, you know, thereafter, I played in, you know, the NBA D League, played overseas in Europe. And, um, you know, and, you know, I still then started playing street ball and stuff. And when I came back home from uh, Romania, I, I went and played in a, a summer league. Well, it was the spring league, mm-hmm. Hoops in the Sun. And that's where I got the name H2O. I hit 57 points, hit 12 threes, and yeah, that name stuck, and I made it into my business. <laughs> I love it, H2O. So but before, what was the experience like playing overseas? You were in Romania. What were some other cool cities? And you know what? I feel like most people, because they're young when that happens, they don't really appreciate the fact that they're over there, right? Like, was it the same for you? Yeah, I mean, I kind of like stayed in my room a lot, um, worked out, you know, two times a day. Um, and just kind of just uh, allowed just I was super focused on basketball. So I wasn't actually able to like see the city like I wanted to. Um, it, it's a it's a like almost like a military focus when you're um, in another place and you're playing and you you want to keep your job. It's not like the NBA where you got guaranteed contracts. Right, right. You could play. 10, 20, like a whole season where you just suck and still have your guaranteed money. Like they don't do that overseas. You got, you play one or two bad games, you could be sent home. So it's, uh, you got to be on your, your P's and Q's at all time. Um, I was, I played in Romania, Hungary, China. I played in DR, played in Puerto Rico, Mexico. Uh, yeah. Colombia, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, and then, you know, I started playing the three on three fever, three mm-hmm. on three. I'm actually, I've been working out, running a lot more, getting um I'm actually gonna be going to Boston to play in the uh, Red Bull three on three. Red Bull has started up the three on three thing. So I'm getting back into the fold with that. And it's not about me, it's not about anybody else. It's about me. Like I always like to challenge myself to see if I can, you know, I do all this stuff and a lot of people forget 
what my roots are. Like, you know what I mean? Some people don't even know I play basketball and I don't talk about it that much. You know, I just, uh, you know, it's, if you ask me a question, I'll tell you all of this stuff. And it's like, wow, uh, I just thought you were, <laughs> you know, just a guy who, you know, does ball for peace and like and, <laughs> and do community events. But, um, you know, I, that's something that keeps me going. You know, sports keeps me going. Like, you know, I'm competing against, again, myself. Like, can I still do that? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, can I get better at, what can I get better at now? Like, so, um, I love it. You know, some people will be like, yo, just sit down. You've done enough. You've proven yourself. You did it when it counted, right? I did it when it really counted, when, you know, playing ball and when it was, everybody was playing ball, you know, everybody your age was playing ball. Now it's, you know, everybody my age isn't still playing ball. You know, it's like, you know, they have families and this and that. And I still love the game. So I, I coach it. I train it. I train people. I play it. I referee. I do a lot of different things. And, um, I like to look dope when I'm doing it too. Even my running <laughs> shoes, I like. I got some nice all black Nikes, and you know, it's just it's a, just a different style, man. Like, so I, I believe that getting back to sneakers is always the look, you know. And a lot, um, I don't care about like the names of sneakers all the time. I like really like to match and like you know, and and, and, and you know, some some people are like some some sneakers that people wouldn't even think are cool, right? They look cool. Like, I like the way they look. Now, wait, I'll buy them. You know, I, I've been to, like, even places like Ross or, like, you know, Marshall. Sometimes you find some gems and stuff in there. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. And it doesn't matter when you get them. Some, like, people like Gabby love to get on those those uh, lists and everything. And like I never went on the list, though. I just want to, like, say it on record for the 90 millionth time. <laughs> I never went on a list. I'm forever waiting and getting shut down by the bouncer. Like, am I not cute enough, you guys? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> so somebody like me, they can release them four months prior. If I see them somewhere later and I like them, I'm going to go get them. Like, you know what I mean? I don't need to be first. But if I have them, cool. Like, you know. Those are the best kind of pickups, though, right? And I think like, I love that you talk about Ross and Marshalls and some of these other stores. And about style. I think, you know... We're, we're from the New York, New Jersey area. Queens is a big part of basketball culture in New York. And New York is a basketball town, even though we might not have been the best team for a few years. But, you know, peaks right. and valleys, as uh, a wise man once said. But talk about how Queens has influenced not just your playing style, but your style on and off the court. Well, Queens, I feel, is the, the, the borough that um, a lot of talent comes from. And we have to go to other boroughs to showcase it a lot. You know, a lot of people don't come to Queens, you know, because it's a two fair zone. Like you got to have get the bus to the train. Like, you know what I mean? Or like somebody like myself, I live close. I lived in Queens and Long Island, close, you know, I, um, living in Rosedale for uh, about 15 years. And then I, I lived in Jamaica, Queens for a long time. But we all had the bus to go to the train. Like, you know, so a lot of people just don't like to come out there. So, but being from Queens, we had to go a lot of other places. So it was very cool, like for us, like I would love to go uptown and go to the Bronx or here, but they don't come here. So we actually get the best of all boroughs, right? Because we're actually going places and, um, and seeing more when people are like, I'm from Harlem. So I'm just going to stay in Harlem. Like, it is like, okay, but there's a whole nother town over here that you don't know about and that's something that like uh queens guys do you know um queens you know people i should say you know ll cool j said it best like when he was on a come up he was talking about how he had to go to these different boroughs and linking with certain people and that's how you know you expand your network by doing that some people just have their little network and that be that and they don't they, they don't broaden their horizons a lot of people don't even leave their blocks but people from queens we all out so i, I love being from queens um, but one of the things is that we don't really get too much support from others because we're so, uh, independently built, you know what I mean? So like, I'll just, I'll go to an event or a party by myself. Some people wouldn't even think twice about going somewhere by themselves if they didn't have 10 people with them. You know what I mean? And it's not about no big thing or anything like that. It's just they feel the need to have people around them. But being from Queens and growing up in Queens have made me super independent and super like uh, self efficient. So um, I, I love my borough. Um, you know, I love my city, but I love Queens a lot. And um, 
that's where like you know doing things for my my borough is uh very big for me you know it means a lot to me so you mentioned obviously um your nickname h2o and your company's h2o basketball so what are some of the things you do with that that your company and what are some of the things you do for your neighborhood and for the community of queens so since before i even started my company i uh I started something called Queen's Day, right? And, and uh, me and my, my guy, Dave Buckner, we started Queen's Day for all the senseless acts of violence that was going on in our community. Um, my best friend, Mark Arrington, he got killed. He got shot up in Hollis, Queens. And um, it was a very sad day for me, you know what I mean? And I, I wanted to come back. I was in college. I was at uh, Sacramento State at the time. I wanted to come back and do something positive. And so we started that, you know, Queen's Day basketball tournament, uh, Iron Man basketball tournament. We gave out a thousand dollars because we know basketball sports brings people together. But, we, you know, we play basketball. So basketball brings people together. We know that for a fact. If you're playing five on five pickup, yeah, West Fourth, you at the park. Right. And, you know, I don't care what color you are. I don't care if you're Asian, uh, Indian, whatever. We're trying to stay on that court. So basketball is bringing us together. We're actually trying to find out what you do best so that we can continue to have you do that. If you're a great rebound, rebounder, like re rebound, right? If you're a great passer, pass the ball. If you're a great shooter, shoot. And we use everybody's strengths in basketball and in sports. We use their strengths. Only outside of sports, a lot of times, we, we're telling people what they can't do a lot. Like, you you suck at this, or, you, you know, you're not that good at writing essays, right? Like, I know I'm not. Like, that's why I'm here in school, right? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and, and life itself is just like, hey, you, you, you grew up in a poverty-struck area. I know that, right? It's like, so how are you going to help me, right? How are we going to get better? And we don't have answers like that. We only have uh, put-downs and, and, and a lot of that. Um, so with that... I started ASO basketball where I coach, I train, I mentor kids and now like, you know, independently. And then I started working with different companies like the Harlem Children's Zone, uh, YMCA's, Boys and Girls Clubs and all these different organizations to the point where I was like, I got to do this by myself and do it on my own. And that's where I started, built my own, uh, you know, my own AU team, ASO basketball. A lot of my kids aged out. I started with them in the fourth grade and I used to just every year go up with them. And now like they're all like seniors in high school. And I'm like, shit, like I'm getting old, bro. Like, you know, what I mean? <laughs> um, you know, some of them going off to college and now it's like, wow, bro. Like, you know, but I never, I didn't move back with my H2O team. I and I was coaching by myself and that, that's something I have to do if I'm going to continue to move it forward because it's a new wave of players coming. And, um, you know, I, I I would just focus on my one team. You know, I would put them in tons of tournaments and stuff like that. And and that was like my first bunch of babies, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, moving forward, you know, I, I started the the the, the ball, um, H2O basketball. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Queens Week started out as Queen Day and then it grew. And then we started doing, we went to uh, one time, the, the park that we did at, Roy Wilkins Park, they had like, their 75th year anniversary and they're like hey we love what you did in the park can you do a week of that like and i'm like uh <laughs> yeah i can see so then it became queen's week like we had face painting for the kids like clowns and uh, bouncy houses and all that stuff and it was just a great experience and a great day and um we made it happen and um um at the end of the day at the end of the day uh i i just wanted to do more for my community and uh, try to shed light on all the senseless acts of violence that was going on in my community. And, you know, and that led into Bowling for Peace, which, you know, I've been doing for a couple of years now, too. Tell us wow. more about uh -huh. Bowling for Peace and, you know, how H2O kind of led you into that and, like, all the good work that you're doing for the community with scholarships and merch and all that good stuff. So if you've seen, like, recently I had, like, <clears throat> posted something from the New York Post in my stories New York Post has been covering me and, and uh, the Queens Chronicle and stuff like that, but for uh, Queens Day, which became Queens Week, um, and you know I was doing that for a while, and then um, my partner had a, a child, he had a baby, and then it was like, man, I don't want to continue to do that by myself, so I wanted, you know, uh, and we kind of like fell out when, with that because it's like we're all growing up now, and it was like you know, 
I'm not, you know, it takes a lot to do these things. So it's like, you know, he has a child to raise and I'm like, I don't have a child, but you know, I don't really want to do that particular event anymore without him. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, uh, the, the whole Mike Brown and Eric Gardner situation happened and I'm like, we need to do something, you know? And, um, that's when I started balling for peace and, um, and I had the celebrity charity sporting events and, um, I know that celebrities have a lot, a louder outreach, you know, from me doing Queens week, I like, it was cool, but you know, it's still local. Balling for Peace is like low key global now, you know, and it's um, a lot of people know about it and at least nationally. And um, we're pushing to go global with it and stuff as well too. Um, before COVID happened, we want to do the road to peace tour, um, you know, sporting events. So we did the basketball, we did the flag football, uh, we did bowling this year. We added softball and um, we did that. The first softball game, I wanted to do something outside because of COVID. Right. And um, we, it's really hard to get gyms and colleges to say, OK, you can have your basketball game. So I was like, if I'm going to do a softball game, why not do it across the street from Yankee Stadium, you know, where they won 27 championships and um, the, the just the 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 aura of it in the 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 beauty of the background of, of Yankee Stadium was amazing in my head and it came out from my head to just seeing it in real life was just so dope you know and I did the NYPD versus Bowling for Peace All-Stars and um, I got the community cops and community involved and um, you know with the celebrity touch and it was perfect you know we had a lot of coverage from that um, but I want to continue to do these things you know it's uh, like a lot of times I do it and it feels like boom it's great, wonderful, but then it's like, ah, then I just sit back and go back to regular life for a little while. And like, you know, it's, so I want to continue to do these things and make sure that um, the people know about it. And I always say the right yes can change everything. And that's what I really believe in, you know, even with y'all show, y'all show is dope, but you gotta, you gotta keep pushing and keep going. You can do some dope stuff, but if the right people don't see it, then it's like, you know, you know, it's, it's you'll keep going until, you get that yes that you need, you know, but what's to say you could be, guys can be on complex and this and that. And third, like it has, you know, it's a wonderful show. So keep pushing. That's my uh, advice to you guys with that. It's an amazing thing that you guys have people. A lot of people start stuff and don't finish. Mm -hmm. No doubt. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got to keep going, you know what I'm saying? It's dope. And that's some, some of the words of encouragement that I can give you, but, um, all of a piece has been, um, a blessing. That's uh, yes. Seven now. Um, Queens week year 11 now um, you know it's just having to have those things happen and people kind of uh, look forward to them every year it can be oh like oh man I gotta and then you gotta get better every year yeah. too like now we went we went from just jersey tops to you know um, or, or t-shirts to full-fledged jerseys this year so shout out to Wooter Apparel and this is just like I, um, when you see the vision, you put in what you get out you, or you get out what you put in, I'm sorry. Um, and you just want to every year elevate a little bit more, you know, and, um, that's, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm kind of taking the things that I've learned from Balling for Peace and, you know, implementing them into Queens Week and stuff. Cause people, they look at what I've done with Balling for Peace and they, they don't expect anything less. So I can't have that. Queens week you know what I mean I, I have to go all out for that as well too um and it's very unique the game itself is amazing man like this game is 21 by ones and twos two game elimination uh it's 20 minute running time so every possession counts you got to play man to man defense so people have fun it's not only just it's not just your typical basketball game it's like and then you, the winning team is five thousand dollars so you know everybody it's exciting to watch too everybody yeah. gets involved yeah, yeah. So you get some good basketball players and stuff like that, and you know it's uh it's amazing for me. I don't, I don't, I've never played in it. I get to just sit back and and just watch some good basketball and just. Um, last year was an amazing year because we had the first time we had three courts. We were able to do three courts at one time, so it kind of went quick. And then this was the first year that we had like ways for teams to pay to get us to pay before other than us having a run down and, and hey, can you get me give me $200 for the deposit or this, that, and a third? So me and Buck used to run around like chickens with our head cut off trying to get everybody deposited. Sometimes, honest, honest story, people would come to the park 
without fully paying uh, the day of and look at a team and be like, oh, no, nah, they in it? Nah, I ain't going to be in it. Like, <laughs> like, wait, but so you're not you're just going to, you know, you don't get any rent. Oh, that's cool. Or they would combine with other teams and it's like, yo, what is going So that would mess up our whole bracket. So now that we have Cash App, Zelle, and all these other ways, PayPal, and get paid. It felt like a whole different ball game. Like we were super organized when it came down to that. We already knew all the teams and stuff. Um, I was looking forward to Gabby being a part of it this year uh, uh, again. I might be virtual. I might be. I might be virtual, but you know, <laughs> virtual. So. Um, but I, I do want to talk about that though, because I think, you know, I was fortunate enough to be there last year and uh, to help you out and help bring your vision to life. And I think like you were really bold and I don't know. It was when the world was starting to open up, we didn't know where things were headed. Events weren't back yet. I felt like you were the first and I felt like it was really inspiring and invigorating, not just for me, but like for the community and just seeing how people responded. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about like, I know you start to talk about some of the changes from last year to this year, but like last year, your involvement with NYPD and reaching out, like with everything going on in the world, like that's a major moment. How are you kind of taking that and, and continuing to tell that story this year? So um, with NYPD last year, um, they weren't giving out any permits for parks. I'm like a, I'm like on top of everything when it comes down to that. So I'm like, I need my permit. I don't care what's going on. Like, they're like, we're not giving any permits. So I said, I still want a uh, police uh, presence. And they're like, we can't guarantee it. So I'm like, dude, like I'm doing a, I'm doing a peaceful event, basketball game. So I'm like talking to the community affairs uh, uh, director and everything. Like, this is why people in communities right? And the cops and community, we butt heads. is because I'm trying to do something positive, right? I'm trying to do something positive. And you guys are telling me, we'll see if we can come. Like, mm -hmm. dude, I don't want to have to look around and be like, oh, my event might get shut down because I have these people here. So, and I, and I told them just like that, I'm doing my event. It's going to happen. I would love it if you guys can be there. So, you know, they gave me, I don't know, it's COVID, this, that, and the third. You could do it at your own leisure. And it's like, I'm going to do it. So I get a call in the morning, that morning, uh, while I'm at the park. And um, they're like, hey, Mr. Hargrave, we're over there in the corner if you need us. Like, you know, uh, you know, we're right over there. So I went over there, walked to them, you know, dapped them up and stuff. And like, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, we took pictures and everything. And, and that's the type of stuff. And I said, this is what we need. The people need to see you, not just for when something bad is happening. You know what I mean? So yeah, when no. something good is happening as well, too, you stand there, you guys are having a good time as well. And they had a, a wonderful time. So um, that's just something that, again, bridging that gap. Let's have these conversations. Let's, you know, be OK with community uh, policing. Like, you know what I mean? We should have our police and the community, not just when it's bad things happening, you know, Um even down to when you're getting tickets, these people like these cops are like they're walking around and, and just giving out tickets. Right. And, and, and I've gotten a ticket before from walking from my car to get the uh, going to the meter. And I come back and I'm like, hey, I went to. the. Well, I'm sorry. I already started the process. It's like, <laughs> dude, I, I didn't even get like, how are you? Oh, well, just, you know, just tell them that and they'll just, uh, you know, they'll throw it out. Like, it's like, I have to go through a whole right. process. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So those conversations need to be had. We need to come together a little bit more. And, um, but again, a little bit this year, I'm going to do an FDNY game versus uh, NYPD uh, at Queens Week. So we're doing two days. Okay. Last year we did one day. We're going to come back. for two. So we're going to bring the final four teams back. Uh, it's going to be 12 teams. The final four comes back for Sunday. And then we'll do a FDNY game. We're going to do a high school game and a middle school basketball game. And then the final four, the final four play. And then you have some performances. And um, doing events like this allows people who have, haven't have been able to do uh, or sell anything with their business. A lot of these vendors have, haven't had events to do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when I did Queens Week, they were like, thank you so much. Like, you know, this all selling out, you know, the food, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
shirts, all that. So it was uh, a great thing. And people don't realize that. Even the referees, they're getting paid. Everybody's getting paid to come out and do a job that, you know, during a time where people didn't know how they could get money. You know, I felt like I created ways for people mm-hmm. to actually still feel feel good. You know what I mean? And working with, with the Knicks, with Gabby and stuff like that, we were, you know, we were doing a lot of that stuff. And then it just halted. Like, so it was like... Mm-hmm. That, you know, w- w- what you're doing, Haran, with Bomb for Peace, with Queens Awake and all this stuff, to tie it back to sneakers, this is what we often talk about, the community aspect of it, right? Like, you mentioned, yo, cops, this shouldn't just be a thing where you guys just show up when you're trying to bang somebody's head in or whatever. Like, that's not, like, you should know the people in this community, the business owners, whatever, the people who who are here, who are here all the time. And so when you, what you're doing is creating, I mean... <laughs> use the word again community right where everyone works True. together right to solve their individual needs right business people are getting their wares sold right cops are getting to know people people in the community are getting to know the cops so it's not a thing where when they see you on the street and let's say like, some adverse event happens it's like wait but i know jim smith because i've I've been doing queen's child i've been doing queen's with him for the last three weeks or the last three years you know all right, Jim, tell me what's going on here, right? Like you, there is a level of familiarity and a way in which everybody can speak. And again, listen, man, you, people tell you this all the time, I'm sure you're doing the Lord's work, right? Cause it, Thank cause you. it, cause it's not difficult. It's not easy. Excuse me. It is yeah. really, really hard to do what you're doing, but that, that comes from a genuine place of love, right? Because you, you want to see your community do well. And that's, that's what it's all about. But folks, Haran's not going anywhere because y'all know what's coming up next. America's favorite segment, Shoe and Tell, presented by Another Lane. Don't go away. What's good, everybody? We are back, and you know what time it is. America's favorite segment, Shoe and Tell, presented by Another Lane. You know, listen, Chad and Adina, greatest people on earth. We love them. They are our sponsors of this segment. You know, we always talk about community, and we had a great time talking with uh, Haran about what he's doing in Queens. I mean, this is what Chad and Adina are doing in the sneaker community, right? Building people, everybody getting together, talking about their love for these amazing things, right? So make sure you check out anotherlane.com, people what they're doing over there. All right, Haran, the floor is yours, my man. Show us what you got. All right, so I'm, you know, I'm a ball player. So I have, uh, at a point in time, it was like you try to stay away from injuries and things of that nature. And Kobe Bryant came out with these, these, uh, these Kobe, Kobe nines, right? These Kobe nines elite. Um, I've never worn them. The L.A. Laker color. Did you see the Ooh. purple? And see the, oh, with the, the ankle support. Look at right. that. Ankle support. Needed these. You know what I mean? I got the Kobe 9s Elite. Never worn. And now that, you know, uh, God rest his soul, you know, um, people are like, you, you shouldn't wear them. Like, just keep letting the value go up um, on them and stuff. But I don't, I like sneakers. When I see them, Sometimes I, I will never wear them, right? And, you know, and I know I'm not gonna wear them. I just love to have them, and um, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself like a super sneaker head, but I love good sneakers, right? I love like to play in sneakers as well too. Sometimes I'll buy sneakers twice. And stuff. <laughs> um, and these right here, the, the Kobe Tens, right here. Again, oh. never worn. Never worn Kobe Tens. Like that. High high. Like, I like that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, so um, I also, I, the, the story about those, I saw them, one of my, one of my homeboys had them on, and I'm like, man, those are fire, and um, I, like, bought them, and just was like, I, I didn't plan on not wearing them, but it's just, you know, you move from places, it's like, you know, I'm not gonna force wearing a pair of sneakers, sometimes you just gotta... <laughs> And then when with me as a ball player, when I'm comfortable with a, a pair of sneakers when I'm playing, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes I'll just rock out with those. Um, I have a tons. I have tons. I don't know how many I can show, but these are the Grinch uh, Omori Stoudemire's Christmas Day releases. Oh. Uh, Air Max Omori's Nike, never worn again. Like I That's do have guy. some stat. These are the stats. I like them. No, I have uh, to say, it's very interesting that Amari has a pair in the Grinch colorway. Because <laughs> I got to say one thing. Oh, Lord. Shana Tova, Amari. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Ha- and, and by the way, to you, uh, Gabby, uh, Shana Tova, you. you know, Happy New Year. See, you're 50-something-something. I don't, I, I don't 
It's five thousand something. I don't know. I don't know what the rest of the yeah, something. Yeah, we old. <laughs> yeah, we wow. old. <laughs> um, I'm aging like a fine Manischewitz. <laughs> Manischewitz. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, and and right here I have some uh, some KDs. Oh. I love a KD. Hey, wait, hold that up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. That's one of the earlier models, KDs. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. KDs. That's a comfortable shoe. Do you do you hoop in those? Never worn. Oh, okay. Let's say, I'm going to start calling you instead of H2O. I'm going to call you Mr. Deadstock. Deadstock. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Never, Mr. Never Worn, right? <laughs> Never Worn. Um, and uh, I, have, uh, I have another pair of KDs. The, um, I love when people literally go into their closet to fix I like those. Shoes. That makes me so happy. I like those. That's a great colorway. Yep. That's yeah. like a Queens Week colorway there, H. Yes. I look like those jerseys you posted. Mm-hmm. For Queens Week. Exotic. I, did, I, I like that. Purposefully uh, done. These are the um, Texas, uh, Texas. Uh, Longhorns. Yeah, Longhorns mm-hmm, edition mm-hmm. that he had put out. That um, to me is, I go to Queens, find me a queen. <laughs> And um, these are these are something I, I picked up in like China. I don't, I these nice. Are, yeah, I picked up the, some Brazilian. There was a Brazilian. Uh, uh, yeah, I I don't. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> they're cool. And guys. I have like they come with different color shoelaces and different. Oh color yeah, shoes. yeah. Again, never worn. I like them. I like those. What is your favorite pair that you rock currently? Um, Even if I, you don't have it to show, I got to ask. Like one for I, life and one for hooping. I want to know both so of those. So I, I, I rock a lot of Air Force ones. Right now, I, I have the, uh, uh, like, a, uh, they're the Army color green mm-hmm. Air Force, mm-hmm. Air Forces. Got a headband. Yeah. <laughs> got to have Seriously, a headband with a it. <laughs> so, um. I, I wear those. I wore those um, even in the winter time. Like, and I wear like my pea coats with the hoodies. It, it's like super dope and um, ripped jeans, of course. <laughs> but um, yeah. And then um, I'm, you know, I I, I started working with Nike um, over Ooh. the summer and doing. Um, I'm a national camp director with Nike, so I started doing that. So I had to wear a lot of my Nike sneakers all the time. So I would, I went into my stash, started wearing some of my low cut Kobe's and different uh, sneakers that I have, um, and started hooping in them. Um, I wish I could show you they glow in the dark and stuff. Um, pretty Ooh. dope. I don't, I'm not good with the the names of everything. I just buy them, like I said. And um, <laughs> that's what matters at the end of the day, though. Like that's the right. name, is, it's if if you like it. That's right. And that's it makes what matters. You happy. That's honestly all that matters. Like. Yeah. There's different names for the same pair of the kicks. Exactly. Who are you? It's like the, you know, it's like how many, you know, Jordan retro, like 11. There's a billion of them. Like, right. It's just yeah. like, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm heavy into Adidas as well, too. I'm, um, I wear a lot of Adidas because they feel comfortable. Okay. Like Adidas yep. sneakers as well, too. Um, I like to wear the, the track suits and things of that nature. Okay. I so, like it. Um, and again, I match with everything, so I'm so always. Do you ever mix brands, though? Mm-hmm. You see, there you go. We don't play that game. We don't play that game. If I see somebody with some three stripes on and Nike shoes, I'm like, "What the hell are you doing?" Uh, Unless they're a little kid. If they're a little kid, I'll give no, them a pass. Nah, nah, I'm nah. Like, yo, yo, mom's like. <laughs> you know what I tell little kids? I go said, to Coles, get him an Adidas not- T-shirt. Wear Nikes and Adidas. I don't care what it is. You can't have a Nike shirt on with Adidas shorts. No. I don't care if you're two. I don't care I, yeah. if you're two. If you're 100, <laughs> I don't care. It don't matter. That is that is a, no, that is a faux pas. We don't play that game. No. <laughs> no Yo, I, I, I go to the stage where, like, if I'm, like, if I'm, let's say I'm like wearing my Stan Smiths, I'm out or whatever, and I grab masks, right? I'm like, oh, I'm grabbing my Adidas mask, right, to go with it. Like, but if I, if I have my Nike slides on, I'm not putting on that Adidas mask. You crazy? Like, no. No way. Can't do it. I didn't know this about you. Listen, can't do it, man. Can't do can't it. Can't do it. You see, there you, you go. Exactly. That's why you gotta rock the neutrals in between, like the plain black <laughs> leggings, the NBA mask. See that 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 that's what you ladies get to do. You 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 guys so. get to have the neutrals in the middle. Well, now you have an NBA mask too, Jerome. Oh, I do, okay? I do. Shouts to that's shouts to Gabby for for picking me up a little uh little NBA Yay. mask. You know, doing doing it up. But hurrah, man, this is dope. We really love and appreciate what you're doing, man. Tell the people where they can find you. Hey, you can find me. I got a couple of handles. You can find me at H. I'm going to make it quick. H205. That's the letter O, not zero. 
Find me at ACO Basketball, Balling for Peace. Go to ballingforpeace.org. If you, uh, you, you, anything that you want on that website, you can uh, buy your merch. If you put in the word donate, you get 20% off of everything. So um, Balling for Peace, B A L L I N, the number four in the word peace, dot O R G. Uh, find me there and, you know, whatever you need, hit me up on the, on the gram and, um, you know, and that'll be that, man. Um, hopefully, uh, I, I thank you guys for the show. Um, hopefully we can, uh, you know, share this with the people. No doubt. Then, no doubt. That's right. Uh, See, as, as he said, hit, hit me up on the gram. That's, that's what the kids say. They always say, you know, <laughs> anything you hit need. Me on the gram. Hit me, hit me on, on the gram. gram. That's what, that's what the kids say, guys. <laughs> <laughs> As, as always, folks, you know where to find us. We are part of the Count the Dings family. We are on the Bomb Podcast feed. You can find us with the original Bomb Show. We can find us with Crazy Sexy Cool, Woke Bros, Growing Up the Same, Rap Names. We're all there. And, of course, we are at Kicks and Shit Show on all social media platforms. Until next time, peace. <laughs>